Some days you win, some days you lose. Today, I won. Well, traders, I'm taking off for the day. I'm done. Uh, I'm going to finish this day up $11,000 and that's a very nice day for me. And um, got uh, three winners, two losers. And I did let my winners run much more than my losers. Well, most of them. Uh, let me quickly go through some of my trades today because I think we've got some uh, very good educational stuff today. So uh, let me do that uh, real quick. Um, you know what? Uh, the only one I'm not going to talk much about is uh, really my loser, Big. If you take a look at uh, Big, you can see that... Uh, uh, well, that was a gap down and I was hoping it's going to be a gap and go and it failed really. It was kind of going sideways and moved up, took me out and now it's moving higher. So Big just didn't do what was supposed to do. There's nothing there really. Uh, sometimes I like to talk about my losers more, but not today. I mean, uh, definitely nothing educational uh, worth talking about over there. I do want to talk about some of my trades here and I will start with Plug. Well. You may remember we talked yesterday about plug. Actually, you know what? Uh, <laughs> let me show you this. You see this piece of paper here? It says plug on it, right? That was the one I yesterday uh, talked about in the room. I mean, every once in a while, I put up a few symbols which I really need to trade the next day. Uh, <laughs> my watch list on the piece of paper on my table. I know it's kind of funny, but you know, it's, 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 I still have them in the computer, but it's, it's just when I have them on my table as well, it kind of helps me. And why did I like plug yesterday? We talked about it because we looked at the daily and the daily is like, oh my God, the stock was at $7 a few months ago and now it's $72. And we talked about this kind of high flyers that uh, the day they're going to start coming down and the way we can short them and uh, how much fun we, we can have uh, shorting stocks, which are big flyers as that. You know, we can go long, we can go short. It's not, definite, not necessarily going short, but uh, the intraday of plug today showed that it's under a lot of pressure. Of course, not recently because the market was moving higher now and plug uh, kind of moved up with the market. But look at the way it came down initially. Um, actually, Yogi talked about it. I was more busy. I was busy with some other symbols today. And then I heard uh, uh, Yogi shorting it. I took a quick look and kind of immediately joined Yogi in his trade in plug. And again, posted this one yesterday, knowing that it's about to be traded um, in the next few days, I didn't know it's going to come up today. But look at the way it came down. Started with a gap up today, came down strong, pulled back up, failed again. And then we took it under 67.40. I took it under 67.40. I think Yogi's entries were a little bit different than mine. Uh, came down a bit, moved up, almost actually reached my target here, very close to uh, $66. That was my initial target. I missed it because it, right when it reached it, it pulled back up again. But then when it proved to me that it wants to continue the journey lower, I added. And you know, again, you always add to your winners. You never add to your losers. I'm, I, I will say this for the hundredth time in here in the room. I don't care saying it for 1,000 times because I know one of the biggest mistakes people are doing is adding to losing trades. You never add to losing trades. You never average down your losses. You never ever do stuff like that unless you want to wipe up your account sometime in the future because you will wipe out your account. It's just a matter of time. So always, always add to a winner if the winner can be trusted. So if the stock is proving to you, it wants to go your way and you like the daily and whatever reason, then, you know, those who you really trust are the ones you should add. Strength, strengthen as it came down. You just add more size, and that's why I've got a ten thousand dollar winner in plug because it kept going, and with an added quantity, it just was amazingly nice. And then I want to talk about, and, and again, you know, one of my nicest winner was Mara here, but no reason to talk about much about Mara because it was a gap gap and go. It came down. It uh, started with a gap down, then it moved up, then it reversed. And that was a, a pretty clear uh, gap and uh, go trade. And again, you look at the daily, it is a stock that we're looking up at, at, at recently because, you know, again, this stock started uh, at $2 just a few months ago, 
two months ago or so and now you know you expect it to come down again so again a stock that is on my list for quite a long time now uh, going short and long every once in a while it's a big mover you know what uh, it may come to you as a surprise but I do want to talk to you about uh, Twitter which I think uh, should be more interesting than other and then we'll talk about GME of course but let's start with Twitter here Twitter is a loser and um, I do want to talk about this loss not because we've done something wrong about going long. You know, Twitter was consolidating nicely at the highs here. Look at Twitter here. Started with a gap up, showing, showing, definitely showing strength, and then kind of going sideways. And very, very clear resistance line right over here. And then we took it and it spiked up nicely, came down a bit, retested, and spiked up once more. It was very close to my target. I needed another seven cents or so for, for, for my partial. But that's not what I want to talk about. I mean, Twitter can fail. It's okay. It's legal. <laughs> and then it came down. The thing is, it came down way too much from the highs. You don't expect a stock that wants to continue higher to come down that much. When a stock is moving over the highs, you expect it to continue. Well, it doesn't. Then you can have a loser. Fine. You do not move out before you see a reversal. That's the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that you have to wait for a reversal to know where your support is. If you, if you had some idea of where you want to move out, that's fine, but you should always wait for a reversal point. So let's say I moved in and I'm thinking I should have my stop somewhere around here, 47.90. Okay, this could be my planned stop loss. But once it comes down and it doesn't really pull back up and I don't have a very clear reversal point which I did have here as you can see that's the only place where you can really have you can really trust the, the support to possibly help you uh, and the stock could start moving higher from that point on so you know it's usually just a question of quantity ask yourself if you have a, any quantity I don't know how many let, let's say you have 1000 shares can you really hold until it comes down another 20 cents or should you move out where you plan to move out? If you plan to move out at 47.90, can you hold on to 47.70? Uh, if the answer is no, because I have 1,000 shares, then that's the wrong answer. What happens if you only had 200 shares? Could you then wait until, I mean, play the right game and then hold until 47.70? Because, you know, when you plan a stop loss, the stock doesn't really have to obey your stop loss. The stock doesn't, really, stock doesn't really care where your stop loss is. Nobody really cares where your stop loss is. So you determine that your stop loss is 40, uh, uh, 4790. Who cares about that number? Somebody does care about this reversal over here. When you have a technical reversal, that's a stop loss. That's a real stop loss, okay? And then, only then, then this is a valid support level. That's the point where you should have your stop. Can you hold to this point with 200 shares? Well, if the answer is yes, well, if I had 200 shares, I would hold to that stop. Then the, the 1,000 shares answer was wrong. No, I have to stand to 40, 47.90. Why? Because I have 1,000 shares. It's a big loss. Then I don't care about the number of shares you're holding. You're just not playing the right game. You should wait until it comes down to the right reversal point and only then have your stop. What I just said is wrong for novice traders. If you're just starting out, forget about what I just said. Have your stop loss, have your stop loss in the system, hold on to your stop loss, don't let it move a cent under. Why? Because you're not that uh, professional in making this kind of uh, assumptions that, okay, we will wait for the next uh, reversal and let's see what happens. Uh, you, you will get carried away, you may get carried away, you may have a big loser, much bigger loser than you expected. So just don't do it in the first, I don't know, six months of trading. But if you're trading over that time or you're feeling a little bit more confidence than just a novice trader, just wait for the reversal point. That's the right thing to do. You should do that. Don't have a hard stop in the system. Just wait patiently until it comes down, shows you the reversal point, and then starts to move higher. But then comes another thing, which is more important than what I just said more important than what I just said. The other thing is really how far should you wait for it to move higher? Well, it came down. Just think about what is going on in my hand, in my head. I came, I, I went long over here, okay? 
I was expecting to get my partial over there. It did not get to my target. And then it started going down. This area, I thought I should move out, but I was waiting for it to reverse. Now, every cent that it comes down, it still looks to me like there's a very good chance it's going to bounce because, you know, it is uptrending and you expect it to continue the uptrend. So you don't really know if it's going to stop at 90 or at 95 or at, uh, sorry, at, uh, at 48 or at 95 or at 90 or at 80 or at 70. You don't know where it's going to stop. You just don't, you have no idea where it's going to stop. So you just wait a little bit more, one more cent, five more cents, five more cents, it comes down and then finally make the move. But the point where it made the move right over here was ex was too much to the downside. It, it just, you know, when the stock is coming down that much, you do not expect it to get back to the highs. You just don't expect it to get back to the highs. It's definitely... You, you know, you, <laughs> we talked about dating girlfriends, right? Or <laughs> whatever. I mean, we had this uh, conversation today that you don't uh, marry to a stock, you just date it. And the shorter the date, the better. So, you know, don't get married to a stock, just date it. And when the stock came down that much, the stock is really laughing at you. The stock is really just saying, well, you still want to date me? I'm, I'm, I don't like you anymore. I mean, just watch where I'm going right now. Do you still like me? I just started dating your friend. You still want to date with me? Seriously? You know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just talking about this kind of real life issues. I mean, it sounds funny to you, but you know, uh, the idea of not getting married to a stock is always important in my opinion. I mean, just don't trust them. And when the stock came down that much, I just don't trust it anymore. That's it. There's nothing there anymore. It just came down too much. If it wanted to continue uptrending, if it wanted to continue dating me, it should have stopped somewhere around here and then continued to a new high. It did not stop somewhere around here. It continued coming down. It shouldn't be trusted. Then what am I doing next? Well, next... I'm not waiting for a miracle that will take it over the highs. I just don't trust it anymore. I'm looking for a good excuse to break up this relationship right now. That's it. That's the only thing I'm looking for. I'm looking to move out of this relationship. That's it. This relationship is going nowhere. So I'm just waiting for a good chance that it's going to move slightly higher. Now, I don't know exactly where, but, you know, I, I moved in here. I have a winning trade here. Now I've got a losing trade here. A bigger loser, a bigger loser, a very big loser. Okay, so I'm just waiting for a small losing trade to move out. So it bounced up somewhere around here. Maybe I could have waited a little bit more. Maybe I could have got a bit higher, but it was hard to say how how far it will bounce. If you're thinking that it's likely to continue coming down, if you're thinking this relationship is over, just wait for a pullback and move out. So, you know, I waited for it to come down a little bit more than I would normally expect because I needed to have, uh, uh, I need to have the support level, which I didn't get. And then when it bounced up, I'm just thinking, okay, that's the bounce and then it's likely to come down again. But where, where exactly? I don't know. So just wait for it to, uh, to, to move higher. This was my original plan to move somewhere around here, which is reasonable. So at that area here, where it just came up to, I mean, just have a smaller loser, that's it. The stock is not going your way. Just, just have a smaller loser. Look at my loser in uh, Twitter. I've got a $1,400 loser. Look at, the, look at the average winner that I'm having, a few thousand dollars. That, that usually is my average winner. $3,000, $4,000, something like that. Big ones would ride much higher. Well, small one in Jimmy, that's a different story. But you see that uh, Twitter is like a third of my average loser or my average winner, which is approximately the same. And the reason for that is because I played it the right way. I wait. I was waiting for it to bounce. I did not trust it to continue over the highs. I'm just, just waiting for a miracle there. And then when it came up a little bit, I just moved out. I don't have a big loser anymore. I have a small loser now. And that's it. And I'm out. I don't trust it to continue higher. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is really... Um, is really uh, just GME. Uh, we had a nice trade in GME. Now, GME is a huge mover, up 40% right now. And look at that. It done it. It has done it today. Uh, some intraday news. It has done it today without a gap. 
again, when the stock is moving up that much, never ever trust it. It's just never ever trust it. That, that's 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 a, a fantastic day. The most beautiful girl you're gonna ever meet. And <laughs> again, excuse me for going that way today again. But you know, that should definitely be a short date. That should definitely be a short date. I mean, when 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 <laughs> when it looks as pretty as that. Why should you date me, right? <laughs> Joking again, right? But I mean, why should you date? Just don't date it for too long. Just, you know, get a quick spike, move in, take your partial and just leave it behind you. Never trust these ones. They're just too pretty and they're probably going to fail you. <laughs> so, you know, we had a nice technical point. You would expect a stock like uh, GME, which is a big upside mover to spike again over the high. So you just buy it at the right technical point and don't trust it to continue. I'm actually still riding 100 shares. Uh, and if it just happens to continue higher, then fine. But definitely have a good stop loss right over here. Look at the, how far it moved and how far it came down. I would not be surprised if it's going to come down the several points. But that's a different game. Maybe we should talk about it uh, some other time. Anyway, um, had a nice day. Um, I saw quite a lot of you guys making uh, good, decent income today. Really proud of you. Really. I mean, that was amazing. Uh, the market was not helping us today. The market was spiking uh, all over. S&P 500 uh, spiked down and spiked up. Probably um, impeachment issues going on right now. So I don't know what's the reason why it's doing that. But uh, anyway, when the market's spiking up that way, then it's always harder to trade. So, well, traders, uh, that's a nice day and another green day. And I'm having all green days uh, from the start of this week. And... Um, Really enjoying my day. Enjoyed your company too. And if you're on YouTube, how about giving us a thumb up, uh, a quick uh, click of a button here that will help our channel and uh, more people like you who may be interested in trading. And thank you all traders. I'm not sure about tomorrow. As I mentioned earlier, I may not be trading tomorrow, but um, I just don't know it for sure right now. So see you sometime uh, tomorrow or the day afterwards. Bye traders.